Uh, we are wrapping up this lecture. The last topic is using external data. R would not be very useful if you had no way of loading and saving in data sets, since R is basically a language that exists exclusively um, for data analysis. So uh, you can read in data sets that were created via Excel, th those uh, XLS or I, I, XLS is now really old. Uh, XLSX files, um, those are also uh, files that Excel creates. Um, R can read those, although for what it's worth, uh, we're not going to be talking about how to read Excel files today. That requires an external package. Um, common plain text formats for data sets include comma separated values, which are CSV files, uh, tab separated value format, which is TSV, and fixed width. Uh, it is possible to read in these data sets using R functions devoted uh, to that task. There's read CSV. I'm using read CSV all the time. Uh, read table, which is a more general purpose uh, table reading pr uh, function, and also read FWF. Uh, which, and uh, for what it's worth, read, CS read CSV is just a front end for the read table function. Uh, but it's often the one that's being called more frequently. And all these functions are parsing plain text data and returning a data frame with the contents. Uh, keep in mind, though, that when reading those files, R is going to try to guess what type of data is being stored in each column, and those guesses can be incorrect. So if you find yourself in that situation, you might need to do some more data cleaning of the original data files, or you might have to pass some more parameters to the R functions to let them know what kind of data is being stored in each column in those types of files. Um, in order to load a file, you might need to specify the location or must specify the location of the file. Uh, and there's a few ways you could do that. You could use file.choose if you're working interactively, if you're not inter working interactively, or if this thing is supposed to be uh, ran in some script or batch, please do not use this function. So, uh, like, I, I can go as, ahead and do file.choose. I wonder what will happen on this system. Uh, hmm, it's not being cooperative. Uh, test.csv. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it is, it's, it's not really doing anything useful on this system. Uh, on Windows, though, it might open up a window for uh finding the uh the, the file in your system and then you can double click and it will uh uh return a string containing the path name uh here though it's not doing that and honestly i have never used this function myself because well i'll put it to you this way if you use file.choose in some script or rmd file or anything like that someone's going to get really irritated with you because the execution of the file is going to stop so that they have to uh, so that because it's going to wait for them to click on stuff in this window and it, it, you're just going to get hated. Uh, what's much better is to just know where the path is. Maybe you ran file.choose once, found the location of the file, and then you save that string and put it into your document instead of having the file.choose function being called in there. All right. So uh, that said, uh, let's uh, move on. Every R session has a working directory. A working directory is a directory in which it will look for files first. Files or directories first. So you can see what the current working directory is with get wd. So yeah, here's uh, my current working directory and my home directory and the document subdirectory and the book down books subdirectory and the one for uh, these lecture notes. You can set wd like so. So in this case, I'm going to set the working directory to my home directory. That's what it is on my computer. Uh, I'm not really sure what it would look like on Windows. I think with Windows, so a Windows path often looks like C uh, colon slash like program files and uh, stuff like that. Uh, I think that you would have to replace the uh, backslashes with forward slashes in order for it to work with R. But other than that, I think, I think that... That's the only difference between uh, Windows and uh, and uh, other operating systems like Linux and Mac. Um, 
uh, and that you can still have like the C directory being called in the appropriate way. So that's I think that's the only difference. Uh, so you can do uh, set WD to choose your working directory. Now when I type in get WD, uh, it shows that I'm in my home directory. So uh, yeah, if you're not familiar with this because you're on Windows, this is just this is a, a Linux way to refer to your home directory. And I think it, I, I actually almost never use Macs, so I'm not really sure if Macs are doing the same thing. I'm guessing so because Macs are Unix based. So, um, uh, if so, if this is the case, uh, are there any CSV files here? Uh, maybe I should do set wd uh, so home directory and uh, let's go to development because I bet there's uh, oh yeah there's some CSV files in there yeah there's some CSV files in here so if I wanted to read in a data set I could do so with um, the command so df will become the data frame and then I do read so I'm assigning that data frame to a variable and I do read.csv and I could do my file.csv or the name of the file so in this case uh, I've got Arkham Horror. Uh, so let's see, what are some of the files in here? So HLCG, this is one of the CSV files that I've got in here. So if I were to look at it, oh wow, that's a, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, so we'll do head DF, that's, that's a little too much. Uh, okay, yeah. So, okay, so yeah, it read in a CSV file. Uh, not very clean. Uh, but that's to be expected. You should, like, it, it's not guaranteed to come in in a clean format at all. You're probably going to have to do some cleaning in order to make the stuff uh, actually work or actually usable in your R session. Uh, so, anyway, um, it is possible to specify a full file path. So, let's see, gets wd. Uh, so, we're right now in development. So, if I wanted to, alternatively, here, it, it looked for this file in the working directory, and it was in the working directory. But if I wanted to be very specific on where this file is located, uh, and in which case you would not need to uh, be in the working directory. Uh, in fact, in fact, let's uh, in fact let's let's uh, set the working directory to the home directory, uh, which is on my computer. And uh, then if we were to run this command, there's going to be a problem because there is no such file in the working directory. Okay, then. So let's uh, do instead specify an absolute file path. So this file is in home, Curtis, uh, development. Yes, 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 development there. All right, and in that case, it worked. And it reads in the same file. This is the exact same thing because I gave it an absolute file path. All right, so you can give it absolute file paths. And in fact, you can give it paths to stuff on the internet and like a, a, a CSV file stored on the internet and it will read CSV files off of the internet. It'll download it and read it, which is really nice. Uh, so uh, in fact, I do so right here in an example i read this uh this is another one of those things where this 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 code might not work just because the internet has a tendency to change and one can only hope that this uh that this uh file is still in the same location and all right it was still there excellent excellent so um we look at energy yeah, that's a lot of stuff, but you can you you get the you get the gist of it. It read the file, and now it's in there. Uh, so R did not parse everything correctly, so we'll turn some variables into numerics. Um, hmm, said there were some warnings. Uh, still playing around with it. This is the resulting uh, data set. So I su I was able to subset that data set to get just U.S. energy, and yeah, so. But the you know the the key part of this lecture was this part. By the way, strings as factors is equals false um, in versions of R prior to R 4.0. Uh, by default, functions such as read CSV would read in uh, categorical type information as 
uh, as uh, factor variables. Um, so, like, if it if it saw like a character column, maybe it was listing out uh, countries or counties or any sort of non-numeric data, it would read it in as a factor variable, and R four point changed that. So you no longer like sometimes that's desirable behavior and a lot of times it isn't. So it used to be the case that you often had to specify strings as factors equals false to tell R please do not convert character data into factors um, because it was often quite inappropriate. And now that is no longer the default. Uh, so now by default strings as factors equals false. So this code is still correct. It's just be aware that be aware of why I wrote that in there, and if I were working in R4.0 exclusively, if I had written these notes when R4.0 was a thing, uh, which was not four years ago, it literally just came out a few weeks ago, R4.0, um, then uh, I would not have bothered to write that line, but uh, that's, any anyway, that's, that's one of the signs that this was written, uh, that these notes are slightly outdated. Uh, anyway, uh, naturally you can export you can export data too, so you can save data as well using the functions write CSV, write table, and write FWF. So, for example, we could say uh, uh, write CSV DF file equals my file dot CSV. Uh, so uh, let's say I wanted I created a data set called my data. Uh, so I created this data set. What what's my working directory right now? So I'm in my home directory. Uh, I created a data frame, my data. And if I wanted to, I could save that data in using write.csv, uh, giving the data frame and also spa passing a parameter to the, passing a string to the file parameter, uh, naming the file I want to save it in. And then if I wanted to, I'm going to remove my data so now it no longer exists. If I type in my data, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, so I will now read in that CSV file. Uh, and it's going to be in my data.csv. And there we go. Oh, uh, it added an additional column that corresponds to like uh, row names. Uh, I would have, I could have possibly suppressed that if I, let's do args. Uh, write.csv, see if it will, oh, it's not going to be very helpful. So let's do, look at the documentation for write.csv. .csv. Okay. And then, uh, okay, so there was a parameter called row names equals true, in which, uh, so by default, it wrote in the row names. Uh, I actually wouldn't like that myself, so... I'll say uh, row.names equals false. Uh, oh, right, right, right. So I need to save. I need to create my data again. Um, so we'll do that. Do that. All right, we'll remove uh, my data again, just, just because I want to. And then uh, read in that CSV file. OK, that, that actually corresponds to what we had before. All right, so uh, we will close out. Oops, so close that. All right, that's it. Uh, there are other formats R can read in too. Uh, in particular, there's data. For, there are data formats that are supported natively by other statistical software packages. Uh, there's Excel files. I mean, does Excel really count as statistical software? I mean, it does statistics, but it's not actually really. <laughs> It's not as serious as R is about statistics, uh, but there are other languages such as, or other uh, programs such as SAS or Stata. Uh, those are very common. Uh, SAS and Stata are very serious uh, statistical programming languages, and they have their own native file formats. And the foreign package allows you to read in data from those packages that were that are in their native file formats. There's the XML package, which I was using earlier. Uh, in a previous lecture video, uh, to read in XML and HTML files, uh, the data in H XML and HTML files. You can read JSON files or data stored in Google Sheets. There's there's all sorts of different formats that R can read, and often they're going to be in uh, packages devoted to those formats. Uh, so you're going to need to look up that information 
uh, on your own if you want to learn more about that. Uh, just uh, to um, uh, wrap things up, uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, I don't want to save it. Let's go to my home directory. There's mydata.csv. Uh, if you want, we can look at this file. So let's see. Although I don't know if I really want to look at it in Vim. So let's do nano my uh, data.csv. Yeah, so this is what a CSV file often will look like. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to have uh, quotes around uh, around stuff, but it's nice when it does. But very often, uh, the only real part that matters in a CSV file is the commas. So the commas separate different fields. The reason in this case why there's quotes is because this was created by R and R wants to make a nice CSV files. So it'll wrap stuff in quotes because wrapping in quotes makes it uh, somewhat easier to for, for software to work with. Uh, but we could, in principle, delete those quotes and this would still be a valid CSV file because uh, there are very few restrictions on CSV files and what goes in them. So, but really you have like the column names at the top. This doesn't necessarily have to exist, by the way. Um, you don't necessarily have to have column names, uh, in which case you probably have to handle that as a special case. R is expecting column names. So if there weren't column names, you'd have to let the read CSV func uh, function know that there aren't column names. Or if they're put in some strange place where they are. Uh, but yeah, so you can read the documentation for read CSV for more information to work with uh, just the weird CSV files that people create. Um, but this is this this is like a perfectly fine different fields for so like all the stuff before the first comma or stuff that corresponds with var one. All the stuff after that comma corresponds to var two. If we wanted to, we could add uh, say uh, var three. In which case we could put like uh, another comma so that we can separate what goes into the var3 col uh, column. And uh, I'm just going to put in some uh, random data for this column. So nothing nothing all that special here. But yeah, this this is still a valid CSV file. So it's a very loose format and for what it's worth, Excel can often produce CSV files. So it's, I think pretty much any program in the world that's working with data can read CSV files. It's an extremely portable format because it's so freaking simple. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a working out well. So we'll save, uh, I'm not very familiar with uh, nano and exit. All right, so that's it for this lecture. Uh, that's it for uh, working with external data. And uh, all right, uh, I'll see you guys later.